Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to more Let's Play TLC Tender Loving Care for the PC. I'm here with Christy. Hi! Yeah! yeah and boy. things. Yeah, boy! Yeah, things horns. have changed. Yeah, here we go. So, what's going on here? Do you believe yes. Michael has ever been unfaithful? I believe yes. during yeah it ha yes because he has like he has has so much sexual tension he must have relieved it somewhere. He's always been thinking about sex. He couldn't have just been sex. you know beaten off. It's also that, but I th th he has the possibility of, of being unfaithful. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Swearing offends me. No. <laughs> Do you know Christy? Game? Come on. Do you Holy hell. Being unfaithful? Can't if say I that offends me. I would be very angry, <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> I, it's hard to say. Do you believe my Catherine isn't handling this situation very well? I disagree. I think she's Swearing handling it fine. Offends me. I am hostile toward people who lead alternative lifestyles. Ooh, sometimes. I mean, put alternative lifestyles. That means like gay, they lesbian. Live too, they live no. They live two lives. It could also mean like gay lifestyles. You know. Oh, the false. If we're going that way, then false. Jody, you can be best described as which of the following? Hmm. 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 The, Jody, don't ask about that way. sound. That was As weird. Of the <laughs> that was um, my throat. Oh, crutch. Ooh. For, for, yeah, a crutch. Be both passive and sexy. Sure. Sometimes when I'm drunk. I don't I drink. Okay, I'll answer. Sometimes when I'm drunk, I get angry and break things. False. Yee. Yeah. Alright. Let's Looking not at... read the book with the four, uh, four, I'm... four <laughs> penises again. <laughs> That's what I was going to do. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I don't know how to get out of it. Erotic what? art. Stuff and things. Nipple tweaking. <laughs> uh, you don't have to read this, obviously. Uh, pause it. Pause the video if you want to read this. More nippleage. Mm. All right. Christy, where are we going? Let's go. Let's go to the master bedroom. Okay. I actually want to hear the radio really badly. <laughs> That's my favorite part. It's so there. awesome at this point. It is. Oh my god. Okay. Do keep in mind, you have to read the journal. I know! Beforehand. Jody sat up in bed. What, an ama what a miracle. Catherine is amazing. That funny, unfocused look has gone from Jody's eyes, her and her old sparkle is coming back. So I asked Michael to bring up a TV for her, and he laughed and said, My God, why didn't I think of that before? Never said that. He wanted to go out and buy a brand new TV, but I told him the old one would be just fine for now. Never said that. Never happened. Michael and Catherine are getting along famously. Never, not really. Michael joked about, uh, about adding on a room for her. The strange feeling came again today, feeling that something bad is going to happen to Jody. It scares me so much that I had to sit down. I Actually, I had to lie down, curl up, and cover my head. The feeling terrifies me. It's like the world turned 
turns into a nightmare. Like I can't, I can't tell the difference between what's real and what isn't. And then I start to cry, and I can't help. I can't help. I start to cry. I think the reason I cry is the reason I cry is that I'm so happy she's getting better every day, every day. But the feeling scares me. To, it scares me. I want the feeling to go away. Ooh. 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 Time for the radio. Here we go. We have Pat on the line. Hello, Dr. Betty. Hi, Pat. What's on your mind? My husband doesn't want me anymore. Do you know why? He doesn't find me attractive. Why not? I don't know. Is there something wrong with you? I don't think so. Your husband just all of a sudden stopped being attracted to you. Yes. You don't have sex anymore? Not for two years. And I can't figure it out. I never felt unattractive before. But now I'm starting to feel like maybe I am ugly. That maybe I've been deluding myself all of my life. Maybe when people said that I was beautiful, they were just being nice. What do you look like? What do you mean? Describe yourself. Well, I'm, I'm very tall, about 5'10", and I have long blonde hair. I have very high cheekbones. Uh, my body is shapely. I have a 36, 24, 36 figure. A lot of men tell me I look like that Italian actress, um, Sophia Loren. Well, Pat, it sounds like your husband needs a healthy dose of testosterone if he can't manage to have sex with somebody who looks like you. Oh, he's having sex. With whom? With mom. Your husband is having sex with your mother? What? For the past two years. How long have you known this? I just found out last week. I went over to mom's house to help her change her sheets. You help your mother change her sheets? Yeah. She has trouble getting around. Older. Doing housework. You see, she weighs 600 pounds. 600 what? pounds? What? She's very big boned. And she's pushing 68. She's 68 years old? <gasps> anyway, I was looking under the bed and I found a box of letters. Love letters from George to mom. What the fuck? Very what? lewd oh love letters. What the hell? Oh. Well, oh my God. it's pretty simple, Pat. Your husband is a geriatric obesophile. A what a file? He likes porking fat old women. <laughs> well, what can I do to get him back? You want him back? Are you nuts? This guy is screwing your mother. <coughs> but I love him. <coughs> well, you better start feeding your face because that's the only way you're going to get him back. So go out and get a bag of potato chips, Pat. I'm Dr. <coughs> Betty. You better get a bag of potato chips. <laughs> what, a, what a fucking bitch. <laughs> Try and help you just stuff your fucking face with food. <laughs> the radio is pure gold. It is pure God. <laughs> oh, what a piece of shit. Don't, don't do it, dude. Oh, I didn't. I, I yeah, yeah, almost <laughs> by accident there. Oh. oh my God. That was the funniest. All right. Where are we going? Catherine's room. All right. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> She's over a hundred, six hundred pounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Shit. Catherine, what?
what do you have in your computer or on your uh, diary here, your logs? Something very interesting happened today. We were making dinner and Allison cut her finger while chopping vegetables. It was a bad cut, but she just quietly stared with fascination at the blood dripping out of the wound. I overcame my urge to bind the finger because I knew something important was happening. I figured she was having a flashback to the accident. I wonder what somebody would have said if they had just seen me watching her bleed like that, but I couldn't interrupt it, though. I had to see where it would lead. After about a minute, it seemed a lot longer. She started to tremble uncontrollably. And that's when I stepped in and washed and bound the wound. Allison didn't say a word for a couple of hours. She sat at the kitchen table, staring into space. It reminded me of when we went bike riding that one time and you flew over the handlebars and landed on your palms in the gravel and you just sat there, plucking the stones from your bloody hands with the serene, rapt expression on your face. You told me that you loved things like that because, because they made you feel so alive. I wonder if Allison was thinking about life or death. Hmm. Uh. Was she? Hmm. Mm hmm. I don't know either. Terrible sadness permits these heads. It would be easy living here to get it sucked into it. I frequently need to visualize myself shouting away at the sadness and watching it swirl away down the dream. When Michael and Harrison have each it in their own, own ways, struggle to cope with what happened to Jordy. A distance has been opened between them. Allison harbors a great deal of hostility toward Michael. It's so, so incapacitating. It's so overwhelming that she doesn't recognize it, let alone understand it. Her affection for me may just be a part, byproduct of her anger with him. I see it in her eyes. I hear it in her voice when she speaks to him. She told me that she and Michael haven't have been having sex. I was surprised that she built this so much soon. So much so soon. It's a sign that she trusts me. Michael's lack of, lack of sex might explain something about the attraction between us. When he came in from mowing the lawn, I could feel the heat pouring off of his naked chest. He smells so good, like grass and dirt. He tries to deny us his anger, anger but it's clear he feels it on some level. Uh, can't help but feel it. He's in lots of pain. He suffers almost as much as Allison does, maybe even more. Michael wants his wife back, over all of her. I know exactly how they feel. It's my principal responsibility here is Allison. But I'm going to do what I can to help both of them return, the, return them to each other as a whole and healthy human beings. They need me both, as much as I need this case. The advantage of this living therapy arrangement allows me to use whatever tools of healing I choose, rather than just the ones prescribed by... Those narrow-minded drug pushers that call themselves psychiatrics. Psychiatrics. Yeah. I just got the phone to Turner Perry and Michael's complained about me. It sounds, like Turner hand it sounds as if Turner handled it well. Still, though, I'm going to have to find more effective means of dealing with Michael. I do want to do want to help him if he'll let me. But he won't if he, if he won't, I can't simp I can't allow him to interfere with my work with Addison. I really enjoyed working with Addison today. We spent a long time talking about Jody and I didn't turn to some of the basics Ad Addison's been neglecting since the accident. I helped her groom herself, brush and brush and fix her hair for her. I couldn't help but think of Colette as I did that, about that time we bathed each other, washed and combed each other's hair, about how I thought Colette had laid me down my bare back onto the hardwood floor Whoa. and taken away the towel. What? The oh, towel. Jesus. I didn't finish reading. I know. Keep going. I'm sorry. Just the whole Colette thing. Oh, uh, sure. Something, something, something up and being my hands together and my fingertips pressed against each other. Each between each pair of fingertips, she in, she inserted a marble. My task, she said, was not to allow the marble to drop, no matter where or how she touched me. She said, if one marble dropped, she stopped. 
I think I'll meditate. I could use a little re relaxation. I like to get Addison to doing it. Okay. Yeah. Where are we going? We're going to the study. The study. The study. The study. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh my, my legs! Oh dear God! My triceps have been ripped. Ah! Uh -huh. Oh, oh so my, I, I, yeah, I know. I'm you. sorry. <laughs> I don't know why, you, why are you apologizing. Okay, we were instantly attracted to each other, and the sex was fantastic. After that month, we knew we were in love. Well, I sure ho hope so. She was so much fun back then, so full of life. She loved going on road trips, especially to the ocean. We never talked about marriage, marriage, but we we're always saying stuff like, when we have kids or when we have a house, one night after incredible sex, Allison started crying. She told me that she was worried that all I wanted her, for, for, wanted her was for sex. I told her that was stupid, so she said she didn't want to sleep for a while. First, I was okay with the whole thing, but after a month, I wondered what, what the hell, when the hell was going on. I was incredibly frustrated. We started arguing a lot. Then all of a sudden, we were on the verge of splitting up. Allison had a roommate named Tracy. A friend of hers from high school. She was a hippie chick with tattoos and pierced belly button. She was very pretty and had an amazing body. She was always flirting with me. One night, Tracy and I got really drunk and ended up in bed. The sex was great and I wanted to do it again. Tracy felt guilty, though. She thought she had betrayed her friend. The next day, Allison came over. She said that Tracy had told her what happened. The thing was, Allison didn't seem mad. In fact, she was apologetic. She told me that everything was her fault and that she wanted to start sleeping again. She started crying. We made love that afternoon. After a, a couple of weeks later, I found something really bizarre. Tracy told me that Allison had, had encouraged her to have sex with me. She had told Tracy that she didn't care about me anymore. It was only after she found out that we had... That we had had sex that she wanted me back. Trina was no help. He thinks I should just get going with, without what Catherine says. I think Mrs. Randolph is, in, in, is insecure and she feels that like she needs to boss me around all, all the time to show me she's in control of the situation. I didn't tell, tell Trina what I really felt. He's very defensive about her like she's his kid or his girlfriend. Mm. The whole situation started to get, sort of piss me off, but I promised myself I'd do anything, just as long as it helped Allie. But is it helping her? She just seems to be sinking deeper and deeper into her fantasy world. And Mrs. Randolph. Oh my god, this is long. This is one of those pushing her. Trina told me that Mrs. Randolph is divorced. I'm not surprised. Mrs. Mrs. Greensheet knew I, I was looking at the nymph's ass in Dr. Turner's office. That was really embarrassing. That girl exuded sexy though, and she, though, and she wanted to look at me. Wanted me to look at her. I wonder what kind of therapy the old Doc Turner is giving her. I bet he doesn't mind seeing her three times a week. Ooh! I stopped by the office and said hi to everyone. Leona wasn't there, but everyone was happy to see me. Duncan asked me if I wanted to play tennis sometime. I told him that would be great. Then I went to Hippy Dippy Food Co-op and bought and bought fifty bucks worth of healthy food crap on the way home. I stopped off. I stopped off at the driving range and blasted some balls. The fence. Man, that felt good. I tried going to bed. Allison sleeps so vigilantly that the corpse I want to run from the house ran away from them. I'm going to go on the porch and drink a couple of beers. It's starting to rain. I just woke up from a scarecrow dream. I can't sleep. Fifteen minutes pass. I well, I just sat here. Staring in a space, I can't stop thinking about Mark, or maybe it's Susanna I'm dwelling on. It was it was Susanna's birthday party, and everyone got to get ice cream for the cake. Mark volunteered to run to the store. He got hit by a drunk driver. So he drove home. He was in a coma. The doctor didn't know if he would ever come out of it. Susanna and I were alone in the hospital room with him. I had my arm wrapped around her, holding her close. My face was touching hers. We were both overwhelmed by what just happened. We were scared and shocked and anguish. I could feel... Her hot tears rolling down my cheeks. I looked at my lips and tasted her tears. Okay, that's really bizarre. And then the strange thing happened. Something about the feel and taste of her tears sent this powerful electric sensation rushing through my body. 
I held Susanna closer to me. She must have felt it too, because she opened her eyes wide and stared at me. All these emotions, sorrow and lust, lost and gain, all of them mingled together. Jesus. Lots of mingled reading. Together. Mingled together and pulled us together like a spell. We started kissing passionately, because each other's body is surprised and thrilled by our unexpected desire. Susanna led me to spare bed in the room we made love while my best friend lay, die lay dying. In late the night, I had the scarecrow dream for the first time. The first dream I had tonight. In the dream, I'm walking through the house in the daytime. Nobody is home. Everything is so quiet and still. I look outside toward the pasture. I see a scarecrow hanging lamb on its wooden cross across the field. The closer I get to the scarecrow, the more scared I get. The scarecrow looks like a person, a man. I can't see his face. I stop, an arm's length away. An old straw hat covers the man's features. I stare at horror with his hands. At his hands. Nailed to the old boards. The blood is dried and caked on. Side of the man twitches. I stumble up backwards and fall on the ground. The scarecrow turns head and look and slowly looks toward the sky. His, his eyes are sunken. His skin is cracked from exposure, but I can still recognize who it is. It's it's my face. It is me. Yeah. Oh yeah. My God. The Symbolism. next T.A.T. will be given in Jody's room. Okay. Look in her dresser. Oh no. Jody's dresser. Are we gonna find a bag of chips in there? I hope so. Maybe <laughs> some marijuana? I don't know. She seems like a pothead. Oh, Snapple. <laughs> <laughs> Wee! She wants all that weed. Oh no. Oh, oh, what the fuck? I guess I shouldn't be surprised that Michael went to see Turner. I half expected it. Turner wants me to keep Michael more informed, if that's going to help anything. She'd be a lot better off if he went back to work and let me get on with my job. I'm making a lot of progress with her, and it would be a considerable improvement if I didn't have to explain myself every step of the way. He's so resistant. And the biggest part of my job is trying to untangle the mess he's created for the past six months. Turner's not much help either. He's better than most of them, but it never ceases to amaze me how out of touch psychiatrists can be with what's really troubling their patients. And she's on the spirit. She's a ghost. Click on this. Click on this. No, what? What? Yeah. What the hell happened? <laughs> what does the oh. stick figure most remind you of? A tic-tac-toe game. If I could have a single wish, I would wish for... Hmm. Um. Um, these world four. peace. World peace. Hippie. Oh wow, really? Man, yeah. humanitarian. Single wish. I would most like to paint a portrait of somebody I love. The child who drew this is humorous. Look at that. Look at his hands. Slenderman. Look He's when at the I was window. A child, I was afraid of. Imaginary monsters. Really? Yeah, for real. I was watching like, Courage the Cow of the Dog the um, show. It's uh, episode. And outside, there was like, I when guess I they a had a slab. I was and of... um, there was a speaker outside. It's like, return the slab. It was really fucking creepy. And for the longest time, I could not sleep in the dark because of it. Because that, that episode. Wow. Drew this, you're Holy crap. Artistic talent. You can't learn it. False. The child really? Who this is you can you can learn how to be I artistic. Ah, uh, of... to me, I think you're born with it, but born we're going by you. Talent. False. You can't... Yeah, you can you can you can, you can learn how to draw and stuff. Um, no opinion. What has the person found? His penis. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do it. If my dog bites somebody, I am responsible. Yes, you're responsible. Yep. Should 
children be allowed to have pets? Yes. Okay. Yep. This is a carload yeah. of... You seem a bit hesitant there. No, no, it does. It absolutely uh, does. Regular people. When you're done painting, you should... I show my parents. Show mommy and daddy. Yeah! Show sure. mommy and daddy. I prefer mommy and daddy. vibrant colors to mute Yes, tones. I do. Very true. true. Yeah. Making up fantasy games. Um... It's good if it doesn't take over reality. Of the following artists, my favorite is... Myself! Humans make art because... Um... They're naturally creative, yeah. The best game Gee. to play at a birthday party is... Hit the pinata. What the freak is past the orange, though? Um... I don't know. Just pass the orange, kids. Which title is most appropriate for this drawing? <laughs> Zombie. <laughs> Children make life difficult. Uh, no the opinion. Game to having a baby inside my body. That'll be weird. Be... Really weird. Why is it not like natural? What the fuck? Okay, weird. A child who makes a mess should be destroying. Given a no discipline. When my parents fought, I would I would cry because I was afraid they were going to get a divorce. Children who explore their bodies are curious, teasing. Is a natural part of childhood and should be encouraged. No opinion. Mothers eventually have to let go of their children. Why is that mom have such a long neck? Well, don't worry about that. Ugh, sorry, National Teach Treasure, but is true. Is a natural part of childhood. Oh, shh, 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 shh. Excuse me. Yes. This thing with the television. What thing? Bringing a set into this room and actually hooking it up. What about it? It's ridiculous. Oh? Why? Because it's a goddamn stupid idea, that's why. You're building up Allison's hopes pretending Jody's still alive. You're going about this whole thing wrong. But your wife's making some very real progress. I don't think she's making any progress at all. She's downstairs making your breakfast, and she's happy. Yes, but her happiness is based on illusion. She thinks Jody survived the accident, and you're encouraging her. I see. Are you going to tell her you're not bringing the television set, or do you expect me to do it? Look, I'll bring the TV in. I'm just not happy with the way things are going. Do you want me to leave? No. I just want a little more... Cooperation. I'll see what I can do. What the fuck? Why did this appear? Sexual tension, that's why. Ooh. Whoa! Oh, I thought it was like a miniature door. I was like, holy hell. <laughs> no, but it's... Oh, Harry damn. Potter, where oh. are you? <sighs> Shit. Done. What's she watching? Oh, um, I turned the set off. She was sleeping. She'll be so excited when she wakes up, don't you think? Well, I am starving. It's been a long time since I've had Allison's pancakes. These are delicious. Thank you. What wonderful, honey. Catherine thinks we should get a pet for Jody. A what? A little dog like Punky. Mm. Animals are out of the question. What are you thinking about? Just trying to find ways to bring life back into the house, Mr. Overton. 
She's right, Michael. Yeah, but with Jody so confined, it might be too much of a tease. Or an inspiration. We could get one just like Punky. <sighs> okay. I'll go to the animal shelter. I'll see if they have one like Punky. And if they don't, I'll just ask them to let us know the minute one comes in. Why not get a different kind? Allison, from what you told me about her dog's death and how painful it was, we shouldn't remind her of it. She does have a point, don't you think so, Michael? I guess so. Will you do it? Okay. Thank you, Michael. You're the most wonderful husband ever. Is he with a patient? Uh, no. Uh, but no, you can't go in there. Look, Mrs. Greenstreet, I just need five minutes of his time. It's important. What is it, Michael? I'm sorry to barge in on you like this, Dr. Turner, but Kath, I mean, Mrs. Randolph is really going too far. I thought she was doing rather well. She had me put a television in Jody's room, and now she's making me go to the animal shelter to get a dog. A dog? Yes, for Jody. Can you believe it? Michael, Mrs. Randolph, Catherine does know what she's doing. I don't think so. Really? Come on in. Hello, Michael. Michael is concerned with your approach to Alison's therapy. Yes, I heard. Catherine was just telling me that Alison, in fact, has recovered a lot of energy and that her lethargy has disappeared. Would you agree? Yes, I guess so. Please, down. You seem unsure. Yes, she has a lot of energy. She's also free of any indication of depression. Well, that sounds good. That sounds very good. Is this true, Michael? That's how it appears to be, but... Allison still believes that our daughter's alive, and Catherine's making it worse. Sorry, making what worse? Her condition. Your wife is actually showing some initial signs of recovery. Michael, returning to normal for Allison is going to be a complex and delicate journey. Now, I can see that you're feeling left out, but you can be very helpful in her recovery. And what's needed most, indeed, the most essential ingredient is your cooperation. Then you think I should do what Catherine says? Yes, I think it would be most helpful. And I should get her the dog. Yeah, I think it's a wonderful idea. This poor guy. I can see now that Michael was more upset than I'd realized. I thought at the time that he was just confused by the process and that simply focusing on the results might put him at ease, but now it seems that what's troubling him most is the dynamic between Michael and Catherine. And this isn't good. At least in my humble opinion. You're just jealous. What do you think? I have become a potter plant. And here, I tend oh, to be someone whoa. who acts with. Um. Passivity. Is it a good idea to put a television in Jody's room? If it's gonna help Allison recover, yes. Does Michael want Allison to recover? Hmm. Yeah. As a child, I enjoyed myself most. When I was being entertained. Do you think Michael should get a pet for Jody? Um, yeah. 
Psychiatry definitely involves a degree. It does, because remember what um Catherine said to Allison earlier. My my um my, when my mom had a stroke, I had a nurse, and that's what made me want to become a nurse, and that thus that bond was created, that trust. Yeah. But it wasn't true. So, so what yeah. are we going with here? I agree. Okay. Michael is probably paranoid. Yeah. My sexual appetite is. Uh, you can't answer this. Uh, ravenous mirror. Just right. I'd just say just right. Is Allison conscious of Michael's sexual desires? She was conscious before. And. Michael is probably paranoid. Her diary, she seems. She's. <laughs> Sexual appetite is. She seems to be somewhat aware of the, the relationship of between the two, desires. and that every time, like when she thought about, it, she had this bad feeling. So probably, yeah. Ooh. Clicking Ooh. on things. Oh, oh, what? Got something here. Oh no. No, you don't have to read this. Damn straight. <laughs> Damn straight. Be sure to pause the video if you want to read what's going on on screen here. There's a lot of information that I don't believe is permanent to what is going on in the story. Just a lot of stuff about ejaculation I saw. Free sex. Yep. Hypoactive sexual desire. Damn. HSD. And last but not least. Oh, oh, oh thought it was going to be the last page. Mm -hmm. Treatment. Treatment. Right, mate. Right. Holy shit. All these pages. What? You know what? Let's go to the beginning and you can read them off. <laughs> oh, fuck off. Oh, my gosh. There we oh, go. Thank God. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Alright. So. Mm -hmm. Click on the filing cabinet. There we go. Ooh. Oh, hello. Allison Overton. So here we go. Allison. Might want to read this. Um, a, a, a subject, Alice Overton, age 28, married, yes. Um, Wait a minute, she's 28? Yeah. Looks a lot older, but okay, 28. Physical disabilities, none, medical, medication, not medical, medication sex things. Previous me uh, mental Sarconian illness. Saconian and Valium. Okay, thank you. Prior oh. to automobile accident of... Uh, February, 20, uh, February 20th, 1996, was treated for a postpartum post depression. depression after the birth of their child. Why? Antidepressants. Uh, it it happens to a lot of women that um, have kids. It's not Why? uncommon. It's just it's something that happens. Patient, patient was... Treated for two months as an outpatient, has been under care of Dr. Canopy for a Providence Hospital since an automobile, since automobile accident, which killed their only child. Cool. Be history, see Canopy's photocopied <laughs> records, more How details. How dare you, cool. 
dick. <laughs> Allison was uh, was first referred to Chrysalis Institution Institute by a Dr. Canby at Providence Hospital. She is suffering from a severe case of post traumatic stress disorder. Coupled with the parental parental loss of child syndrome, Jody, a her five year old girl, was killed two months ago. Patient exhibits extreme disso dissociation uh, traits. She is listless, dispo dispotent, and the attached. She has created a fantasy world in which her child is still alive. After creating her, after training her for mere seven weeks, can be attempted to shock Alice and I have a state of delusion by showing her photographs of the accident. Seen in a Jody in the morgue. Allison violently attacked Canby. Damn. And super, uh, super, rather than in, um, rather than socialize Allison, I will supervise her in home care with four in clinic visits per week. Note, Michael, the husband has informed me that Allison is extremely insistent to visit the Crystal Institute. He told me to be prepared. I am confident. Oh, oh, that I will be able to handle the situation. Kenby is a wretched fool. I must get his invitation to the upcoming Pacific Northwest. Touch a gag trick. We treat revolt. Spending two weeks in St. Juan, St. Juan at Islands with that arrogant dole is more than I can handle. Cowl hanger and, his, and, and arrange this. Um, brief history, Miss Allison, over 10, age 20, was unable to, partici unable to participate beyond head nods during the mission's interview. She would eye contact and Mr. Overton essentially provide a medical and psychiatric history. Met Mr. Overton while attending college and the two married during last year of studies, received a degree in commercial art, developed a small part time business as they moved to the Rogue Valley, enjoyed a successful career until the death of their daughter Jody and a car accident. Psychiatric history is been in with no 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 known. No. Contributing factors to the current psychiatric states. Currently functioning. Striking, abs striking absence of emotional responsiveness. While at office, according to Mr. Overton, she was not over medicated. Restricted range of effect, of effect appears compatible with numbing experience that occurs at, as a result of significant trauma. Husband stated that she avoided any. Active, active participation in her profession. All projects have been on hold for over three months. Husband states that his wife has diminished any in interest in anything happening around town except reading, often secretly secreting herself in daughter's bedroom. Uh, she locked herself in that room for hours at a time and she refused to respond to any attempts at a communication from Miss Overton except to say, please leave me alone. Mr. Overton states that they have been a non-sexual and that she sleeps poorly while staying in the bed most of the time. Um, and that she refuses to even see her own mother, who has traveled to Oregon from California several times since the death of her, of her granddaughter. Immediate treatment goals. Contact Katherine Randolph at the, yeah, at the clinic. Check her availability on to assist this critical case. Symptoms. Miss, um, Mrs. Overton has, expo has been exposed to traumatic death. For daughter, she has manifested at least three dissociative symptoms. A subject, one, a subjective dis sense of numbing, the attachment and absence of emotional responsiveness. Two, behaves as if in a daze. <laughs> That's an anime song. That's a mini op anime opening. Um, three, impairments in occupation, social, and martial functioning. Cool. Yeah. Apparently we have to uh, look around. Uh oh. Oh. That was a weird um, entrance. Yeah, it was. It's really awkward. This let me shimmy through here. Let me click around. Uh, this, what the fuck? What? Why don't we dabble a bit in the realm of the psychic? What? Here's a little game to test your powers of extrasensory perception. 
you will observe four cards face up on my table and a fifth card that is face down. Look at the symbols on the face of the up cards. Square, triangle, circle, plus sign. The face down card is one of these four. This is what I want you to do. Concentrate. Use all your psychic abilities. Form a mental picture of the hidden card and tell me what symbol is on its face. What does this have to do with the game? But Make I don't know. Choice by clicking on one of the four up. The image on the face down card will be changed after each turn. I didn't click. Very well. You're trying too hard. The hell? What? What? Um. Wait. Slap me, sir. What? Okay, <laughs> we're going. Nobody gives a shit. Whatever. Fuck! Wow! What the fuck just happened? Did you get one? She's in the back. Slap me, silly. <gasps> She's beautiful. Jody will love her. Does she have a name? Well, if she does, I don't know it. Oh, Jody can name her. How cute! Mm. Don't you love her? Yeah, she's cute. Let's show her to Jody. Uh, you go ahead. I'm gonna go build a run in the back. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. dogs on the bed in this house. Come on, you little mutt. Oh. What's that? I rescued you from the pound, remember? You'll regret that. Allison? Allie? You in here? Allison! Will you please be quiet? We're trying to develop some concentration. Is Allison in there with you? Leon, it's Michael. Not too bad, how about yourself? Well, we've taken on a full-time nurse. Seems to be working out well enough where I think I can finally come back to work. Thanks, Leon. I appreciate it. Well, she's a therapist, actually. Oh, I'd say she has things under control, to say the least. Okay. Great. I'll see you tomorrow. Jody decided to name her new dog Punky. Even though she looks nothing like the first punky. What does Catherine have to say about that? Oh, she thinks it's a good choice. You know, I was looking for you earlier, but I guess you were in Catherine's room. She's teaching me meditation. What was it like? It's wonderful. 
No, I mean, what did you do? We meditated. Yeah, but what's meditation all about? I didn't know you had such an interest in meditation, Mr. Overton. I'm curious about a lot of things. Perhaps you should try a session with me. <laughs> I don't think Michael's quite ready for that yet. You know, I'm thinking about going back to work tomorrow. That's wonderful, Michael. You need to get out of the house more. You're getting too serious. <laughs> <laughs> OK, fine. And tomorrow you're on your own. Not exactly. I've got Catherine to take care of me. Well, things really are looking up, aren't they? Allison is doing extremely well. Michael's going back to work. That Catherine really is impressive. Though I can't help but be a little curious about her meditation sessions with Allison. I wonder what they're actually doing in there. Don't you? But I'm a coffee maker now. But I, well, I kind of do. Return to work? Hmm. Yeah. You think Hold so? Back. Yes? Yeah. I tend to be a person who reads manuals first. Nope. Was Alison naked during her meditation session with Catherine? Yes. It is better never to deceive anyone. Mm, I have no opinion. It depends. Fetish play is. Do you? Well, oh, okay. Uh, um, I'm not into fetish play. Um, it is better never mm, to deceive anyone. I don't want to say it's abnormal, but that's fetish the only one that is... is given to me. That's not like I don't want. I I, I don't like doing it. I think I have a tumor somewhere in my head. You're gonna make me fucking self-conscious here, game. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> Just saying. We, we, we have to go to the bed. We have to go to the master bedroom first. We have to. Do we? Yes. Okay. We have to go there, ladies and, and gentlemen. We need to listen to the radio. We that have is the to go best there. part of this game. But I'm not gonna lie. Before we hit the radio, we're gonna wait a minute because I am going to end this episode. Oh fuck off! On a cliffhanger. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time, you guys and gals. Hope you have a good day, night, morning, evening, all that good stuff. Huzzah!